God in quietness. Help us to hear your voice. That we would be more like you. We ask this all in Jesus' strong name. Amen. I know it feels like a holy moment of quietness. My, my microphone's a little tinny. And I'm going to come up here because we're going to get connected to the Beatitudes. I'm going to blind some people. But for all of you people who have come over from Dalton, where we did make the paper, uh, what's the Beatitude Mobile? Uh, we do have a person that I pulled out of the out of the can who has consented to attempting to say the entire Beatitudes by memory. Where are you, Brother Mel? Where'd you go? There he is. Can you support him a little bit? For those of you who want to check him, and maybe you haven't been here before, but we're, we're doing it for memory for a big prize. The Beatitudes found in Matthew chapter 5. If you open your Bibles uh, and are looking down and not looking at him, it'll, it'll help take the focus. But Brad, if you just, if you just want to go ahead. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who will hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely accuse you of all kinds of evil because of you. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted prophets who were before you. Excellent. Jesus tells us things we need to be and 
And these are the Beatitudes. As we connect to these scriptures, I believe we get power from the Holy Spirit to live a blessed life. Maybe your faith is running low. Or maybe your faith is even dead. I believe if we connect to the power source of the Beatitudes, the Holy Spirit works through it to revive our faith. So we have the power to drive on. But what about today's text? Matthew 5, 5. I'll read it again even though it was so beautifully recited. Matthew 5, 5. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Now, we need to unpack one of these terms. Meekness is not weakness. I'm not leaving you a whole lot of room on your outlines anymore. I'm piling them up again. But if somewhere you could put meekness is not weakness, or if you would put meekness is power under control. When you consider the actual definition of the Greek word, the imagery that they use is an actual yoke of, of oxen pulling together. That's meekness. It's them pulling together. It's power under control. Now I boil that down to simple obedience. Now there's a loaded term. Obedience. It's almost as misunderstood as the word submission. There are two words that are in the Bible and I don't think we can avoid them. And I don't really think we want to either. Because we like obedience. We like when things obey, like mechanical things. We like these. Does anybody know what this little antique is? It's a garage door opener. It's actually my garage door opener and it still works. I love it when I send out the command on a cold, snowy, dark night and I see that little light pop on I can drive my car right in. I like that obedience. How many of you people grew up in the age of television knobs? Anybody? Do you remember when you had to get up to change the channels on your television? How much do we love remote controls? We stop. We go. We fast forward. We rewind. We like it when things obey. When mechanical things work and we can command them and they obey us. But people aren't mechanical, are they? People aren't like that. We love to hold the remote. But we don't necessarily like it when other people hold the remote. In fact, I've heard of fights in families over who gets the remote control for the TV. Can you imagine the struggle that we have with the one who holds the ultimate remote control? God Almighty is punching the buttons of our destiny. He is indeed holding the ultimate remote control for our lives, but will we obey in meekness? Will we exhibit power under His control? Jesus, once again, in the Gospels, gives us the perfect picture of what meekness is, about what power under control is, what obedience is. Obedience, as you can see in your outline, is exemplified in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now you're in Matthew chapter 5, I'm going to ask you to flip over to Luke chapter 5. Maybe you're reading ahead and you did it already. Uh, there are Bibles stationed on the ends of your pews. If you uh, dropped yours in a snowdrift coming out to your car, you should have picked it up, but you didn't. Well, there's a Bible here for you. Uh, if you dropped it in a snowdrift, it's all messed up and wet. So you probably need to take that one home. That's a gift from us to you. Just don't drop it in a snowdrift. Luke chapter 5. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's two books over. It shouldn't take you too long. I know there are some people right now who are sitting out there going like this, just to deceive me, just to make the sermon last a little longer. We're not doing it. Luke chapter 5. We're going to camp in verses 1 through 11. But I'm going to give you verses 1 through 3 first. Are you there? 